Hi grade 10! Good morning! So, welcome to my very first video tutorial. So, don't forget to subscribe, like, and press the bell button so that you will be notified of my upcoming tutorials. Okay, so, um, also feel free to ask in case you have clarifications or questions. If you have other suggestions, feel free also to send me a message so that I can improve my tutorials. So let's begin. For this morning, our objective is to find the general term or nth term in a sequence. Again, nth term is the term that summarizes the pattern in the sequence. Now, there's no distinct Okay, just to give you an idea, there's no distinct or general formula for us to summarize or find any any nth term in any sequence, okay? It's case-to-case -case basis class. Unless, okay, unless that sequence is under a special type of a sequence. So, let's try to have first the special types of sequences before we... We deal with with the case to case um, sequences of finding the nth term. So let's have example one. So for example, we are given 7, 15, 23, 31, and so on. Now, the first step is to check if there's a pattern or to check what is the pattern. So, in this case, again, how do we check the pattern? Ask yourselves how come that 7 becomes 15, 15 becomes 23, 20, um, 23 becomes 31. Is there a pattern that is true to all to these terms? What do you think? Yes, there is a pattern. So, the pattern actually is, how come we get 15 from 7 actually we added 8 right similarly from 15 we added 8 also and then from 23 we added 8 to get 31 so since we are adding or subtracting okay this is a special type of sequence so when we are adding or subtracting same number to the previous terms. Okay? Again, guess what I mean by this is if we are consistently adding, okay, um, same number or subtracting same number all throughout the sequences or the terms rather, that means this general term, so the general term for that pattern is given by a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. Okay, please take note, a sub 1 here is your first term. Your n here is the number of terms. Okay, and your d here is your common difference so how do we find the common difference um, I'll give you this formula and let's contextualize this later so somehow this is just present minus past okay present minus past now what do you mean by this present and past so present minus past means for example here 15 is your present so that you will have past, di ba? So, 15 minus 7, kasi siya yung past term or previous term rather. So, that is 8. 23 minus 15 is 20, um, 8 also. 31 minus 23 is 8 also. Hindi pwede plus na 23 minus 7. No. Ito lang. Ito yung pinakapas niya, di ba? Hindi yung 7. Okay, so yan yung context natin now. Present minus past. Now, let's use this formula now to find the nth term. 
Madali lang to. We just have to substitute. Now, e sub 1 here is 7 plus n. n is the number of terms. Now, in this case, how many terms do we have? Maybe some of you would answer 4. Actually, it's not 4. Why? Because this is an infinite sequence. And in an infinite sequence, we cannot count the number of terms. So, we will represent it as n. Madam, why is it letter n? Um, for commonality or convenience class, but you can also represent it by other letters. But in our case, we choose n to define it as number of terms. Okay? So, minus 1. Next, D. Your common difference, again, we got 8, di ba? 15 minus 7, 8. 23 minus 15, 8. 31 minus 23 is 8. So, we write here 8. Now, we can simplify this by distributing this 8 to the binomial. So, we have now 7 plus 8n. 8 times negative 1 is minus 8. And still, we can combine um, 7 minus 8. So, that is negative 1 plus 8n. Okay? So, 7 minus 8 is negative 1 plus 8n. Or, you may write it in this way, 8n minus 1. They are just the same. Okay? So, I would prefer this 8n minus 1. Para hindi ko makalimutan yung negative 1. Now, minsan kasi class, if in this way, sometimes the students will forget or oftenly forget to, to write the negative sign. But anyway, they're just both um, same lang naman. So, our general term is a sub n equals 8n minus 1. So, how can we check if our formula is correct. So, to check, um, allow me to erase this. So, dumidigit na talaga yung ink kapag matagal lang nakasulat. So, a sub n equals 8 n I know. Mali. a sub n equals 8 n minus 1. Now, be careful when you are writing um, subscript, okay? So, medyo ma maliit siya sa baba na simsulat. Now, paano masasabing tama yung formula? When we generate a sub 1, a sub 2, a sub 3, and a sub 4, dapat last ito yung makuha natin. Okay? So, let's have a sub 1. So, a sub 1, that means our n is our n is 1, okay? So, 8 times 1 is our general formula, minus 1. So, 8 times 1 is 7, or 8 rather, 8 times 1 is 8, minus 1, excited si madam. So, 8 minus 1 is 7. So, that's correct, our a sub 1 is 7. Exactly the same dito. Next, a sub 2. In a sub 2, our 8 is 2. So, 8 times 2 minus 1. So, 8 times 2 is 16 minus 1. So, 16 minus 1 is 15. So, that is correct. Our a sub 2 is 15. Next, a sub 3. So, in a sub 3, our n is 3. So, 8 times 3 minus 1. So, 24 minus 1. So, that is 23. So, still the same. 23 Ang third term. And last, a sub 4. So, our n is 4 in a sub 4. So, 8 times 4 minus 1. 8 times 4 is 32 minus 1. So, that is 31. Okay? So, that means our final answer is correct. So, to write it, the nth term is is written as or is given by is given by a sub n equals 8n minus 1 okay so 
Reminder again, we use this formula, okay, we use this formula if we have same number that is added, okay, or subtracted for each term. Again, we use this formula if we are added or if we are adding same number from the previous terms or subtracting same number from the previous terms. Okay. So, let's have example 2. So, given 4, negative 3, negative 10, negative 17, and so on. Um, find the general term for that sequence. So, first question, what is the pattern for that? And is it applicable um, in our first example? So, observe, ask yourselves again, from 4, how come it, it becomes negative 3, from negative 3 to negative 10, from negative 10 to negative 17, okay? So, pag-isipan, paano ba naging ganyan? Is there a pattern? Okay, actually, yes, there's a pattern. So, the pattern there is, we are adding... We are adding negative 7. Diba? So, from negative 3, we add negative 7. And here, we add negative 7. Okay? So, that means, since we are consistently adding same number, so, we can use the general formula, a sub n equals a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. Okay? So, in this case, our first term is 4 plus our n since it's an infinite, diba? infinite sequence. So, n pa din. Minus 1. D, sabi natin this is present minus past. So, ganito yun. Negative 3 minus 4 is negative 7. Negative 10 minus negative 3 is negative 7. Negative 17 minus negative 10 is still negative 7. Okay? And we simplify it now by distributing this. So, we have 4 plus negative 7 times n. So, that is negative 7 or just minus 7n. And then, negative 7 times negative 1 is plus 7. So, we can still combine 4 and 7. So, we will be having... 11 minus 7n as our a sub n. Or, you may write it as um, negative 7n plus 11. Pwede naman yan. But, I'm, I prefer this. Okay? Para hindi ko makalimutan again yung negative. So, let us check if it's really correct. Okay? Yung general formula na nahanap natin. So, for a sub 1, so, n is 1. <clears throat> so, 11 minus 7 times 1. So, 11 minus 7. So, 7 times 1 is 7. So, 11 minus 7 is 4. So, that is correct. Next, a sub 2, n is 2. So, 11 minus 7 times 2. So 7 times 2 is 14. So, 11 minus 14 is negative 3. Okay? Or, pwede nyo yung diretsyohin na yan sa calculator. Next, a sub 3 is 11 minus 7 times 3. Diba? N is 3. So, that is still negative 10. 11 minus 21 is negative 10. And lastly, a sub 4, 11 minus 7 times 4. So, 11 minus 28. So, that is negative 17. So, observe, we have same first four terms. So, that means our formula okay, works for that. Um, sequence. So, the final, so the final sentence natin, the nth term is a sub n equals 11 minus 7n. Okay? So, that ends example 2. Let's have the third example. Here, we have 2, 8, 32, 128, 512, and so on. 
Now, the first thing to do is to check its pattern. The question is, ano ba yung pattern natin for this example? Is it still applicable to the first two examples? Let's see. Now, from 2, it be, um, naging 8. It becomes 8. So, most probably, we added 6. Or, we multiply it by 4. Next, from 8, it became 32. Now, we added here 24. Or, we multiply it by 4. Here, we have 32 to 128. We added 96. Or, we just multiply it by 4 again. And lastly, here, to get 512, we added 384 or just multiply it by 4. Okay? So, basically, um, it is more consistent na we multiply it by 4. So, the pattern here is we multiply the previous term by 4. Okay? Now, is there a formula for such type of pattern? Yes, there is. So, when you are multiplying, multiplying or dividing constant number, okay? Constant or same number to the previous terms. Our general general formula is given by a sub 1 times r raised to n minus 1. Okay? Where our a sub 1 is still our first term. Our r is the constant ratio. Okay? Constant ratio is the number, constant number that being multiplied or divided to the previous terms. And still, our n here is the number of terms. Okay? Now, magsisubstitute lang tayo since applicable yung formula natin dito. So, the general formula still a sub 1 times, again, ibig sabihin yung class is times. Okay? R raised to you may write it in a parenthesis. ba? Para hindi kayo malito kung alin yung naka-exponent talaga. Okay, our first term here is 2. Okay, times. Our R, ano ba yung constant nating minumultiply or dinidivide? So, in this case, is 4. We, constant, we constantly multiplying 4. So, 4, yung ratio natin. And, still, hindi natin alam kung ano ba yung Kung ilan ba yung number of terms, so, still n minus 1. Madam, can we um, simplify this? Madam, we can multiply 2 and 4. No, we cannot multiply 2 and 4. Bakit? Since our 4 here is, it has an exponent, yung 2, 1 lang, magkaibang exponent nila. At, oh, magkaiba yung exponent. So, we cannot multiply them. And also, magkaiba yung base. So, madam, is that our final formula? Yes, this is this is our final general formula. So, to check, let us check if this works. Okay? Now, for a sub 1, so 2 times 4, what is our n for a sub 1? So, that is 1. Okay? So, 1 minus 1. So, 2 times 4. 4. 1 minus 1 is 0. So, what is 4 raised to 0? Again, it is any number raised to 0 except 0. Okay? That is 1. So, 2 times 1. So, the answer is 2. So, that's correct. 2. Next, um, allow me to erase this. Oops. So, for a sub 2, our n is Nangaulit yung n natin for a sub 2. That is 2. Okay? So, 2 times 4. n minus 1. So, 2 minus 1. 
So, that is 2 times 4. 2 minus 1 is 1. So, 2 times 4 raised to 1 is just 4. So, that is 8. So, still the same. Next, a sub 3. 2 times 4 raised to... Our n is 3. So, 3 minus 1. Again, dito lang tayo nagbe-base. So, 2 times 4. 3 minus 1 is 2. Okay? So, 2 times 4 squared is 16. So, that is 32. Next, a sub 4. We have... Um, 2 times 4. So, that is 4 minus 1. So, 2 times 4 cubed. Diba? 4 minus 1 is 3. So, 4 cubed is... Ilan ba yung 4 cubed? 60... 4. Tama? Yes, yeah, 64. So, that is 128. Okay? So, for a sub 5, dito na lang natin sa a sub 5. So, 2 times 4 raised to 5 minus 1. So, 2 times 4 raised to 4. Okay? So, that is 2 times 256 or just... 512. Okay? So, that means our answers are correct or our formula is correct since it generates the first five terms of the sequences. Okay? So, as your final answer, the nth term is a sub n equals 2 times 4 raised to n okay, minus 1. So, that is your final answer. So, again, we use this formula. Kailan ba ito gagamitin ulit? We use this formula if we have the constant number or the constant ratio that is being multiplied or divided to the previous terms. Okay? So, that ends your example number 3.